Hey, what's up everyone? Greg's Gauntlet here. Today I'm doing a review on the iPad Pro running iOS 11. I'll put this disclaimer up front. This is running on beta software, therefore I will not be discussing any bug-related issues I've had with iOS 11. But I will, to the best of my ability, try to give you a better understanding of how using the iPad Pro on iOS 11 feels. But before we jump into that, let's talk about the hardware of the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro 10.5 comes in three different configurations. It starts at $649 for 64GB, $749 for 256GB, and $949 for 512GB. Personally, I think the 256 is the best bang for your buck, giving you plenty of storage at a reasonable price. So let's talk about the design. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro weighs in at 1.03 pounds for the Wi-Fi model and is 6.1 millimeters thin. It looks pretty similar to the 9.7 inch iPad Pro at first glance, but compare it to the older iPad models, and you quickly notice that the bezels on the new 10.5 inch are shrunk down to allow a bigger screen and a very similar form factor. The 10.5 inch Pro increases the screen real estate by up to 20% over the older 9.7 inch iPad Pro. This form factor also allows for the use of a full size software and physical keyboard. The physical keyboard increases the keycap size of the alphanumeric keys and is noticeably improved when typing. I'm less prone to make mistakes that I would have when typing on the smaller 9.7 inch iPad Pro keyboard. Aside from the bigger screen and smaller side bezels, it looks pretty much like the previous iPad Pro models. You still have a lightning port for data data and charging, a smart connector for connecting the keyboard, an improved second generation touch ID sensor for super fast unlocking, and four speakers, two on the top and two on the bottom of the device. These speakers sound great, especially for a tablet, and even sound better than some laptop speakers. You also have an improved camera, which is the same 7 megapixel front facing camera and 12 megapixel rear camera found on the iPhone 7. It's actually an amazing camera, and this iPad Pro can take some really amazing pictures and stunning video with a big, beautiful canvas to shoot and edit on. Some people take offense to iPad photography, I say go for it. So the main focal point of any iPad, of course, is its screen. This is a 10.5 inch LCD screen that has 20% more screen area and a resolution of 2024 by 1668 with a 264 pixel per inch density. It's also brighter at 600 nits and supports Apple's True Tone display, which lets the screen take on a similar hue to the ambient lighting around you. The really standout feature on this iPad Pro screen is the new ProMotion display. What is ProMotion? It's a 120Hz refresh rate screen, which means that scrolling, animations, and general app responsiveness is really fast. It also means reduced lag in the Apple Pencil by reducing the latency from 40 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds without the need to purchase a new Apple Pencil. Apple's real feat of engineering here is that the screen is smart enough to lower the refresh rate when you don't need it to save battery life and can adaptively have different refresh rates on the screen at one time. So this means that you can watch a 24 hertz movie and sketch at 120 hertz creating a lag free drawing area and a uncompromised 24 fps on the film without unnatural smoothing effects usually found on 120 hertz television sets. Performance is where the iPad Pro really shines. It starts with an A10X processor. The A10X is a TSMC 10 nanometer chip which is 34% smaller than the A9X processor it replaces. The A10X is a 6 core processor but only runs 3 cores at one time, 3 high performance cores for maximum performance, and 3 lower power cores for maximum energy saving to increase battery life. On my unit, the A10X score is an impressive Geekbench score of 3882 for the single core score and 9222 for the multi-core score. What do all these numbers mean? It means that this iPad Pro is fast and never really slows down. It's approaching entry-level MacBook Pros in raw Geekbench performance, so you can open multiple apps and never have a slowdown in the system. Also, developers are finally taking advantage of this increased processing power with actual Pro applications that rival their desktop programs. My favorite one I've tested so far is Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is a complete Photoshop competitor and offers the same advanced features found on the desktop version. It is a seriously powerful photo editing tool and really shows the power and capabilities of these new iPad Pros. The A10X is really impressive, and I'm serious when I say it's approaching the performance of entry-level MacBook Pros. With all this increased performance, you think battery life would take a hit, but it doesn't. Battery life is good too. I was easily getting Apple's claimed 10 hours of battery life while running on iOS 10. iOS 11 is in a beta, so I won't go into the battery results when testing iOS 11. 
iOS 11 has a ton of new features inside of it and a slight redesign to match the Apple Music application, with big, bold titles and increased focus on content, but the most impressive is a new overhauled multitasking system. It starts by adding in a dock that can be summoned at any time from swiping up from the iPad Pro screen. Here you can add applications just like in a Mac OS dock. When you want to start multitasking, you can now use drag and drop from the dock to place apps in for multitasking. You can do a few different configurations, such as adding two half-size applications, a small window which you can swipe back and forth when you want to check on some information, and watch a picture-in-picture -picture video all at the same time. Applications can be fully sized in each direction, unlike in iOS 10. iOS 11 will also save workspaces of different multitasking windows if you want to switch over to a previous setup of two different applications. And this is also where you can find a new control center with a new design to allow more controls. iOS 11 also adds drag and drop like a traditional desktop and it almost feels slightly more powerful. You can instantly take text, pictures, or any content that you want to drag and drop into another application. You can even drag and drop between full size apps and continue picking up different content to drag and drop as you scroll between your home screen. It works as you would expect and starts bringing in some desktop class features to the iPad in a way that makes sense on a tablet. Apple also adds a new app called Files to the iPad Pro, which replaces the iCloud Drive application. This gives your iPad a better way to access files that you might want to access and open on your iPad. It also makes working with files that you have saved on your Mac easy to access, and really shines if you have an iCloud subscription so you can access your desktop Mac files wherever you go. Some other features I loved is the new way to take notes in iOS 11. You can simply tap your Apple Pencil to the Notes application lock screen to instantly start writing up a note. The Notes app also has a built-in scanner, which is using some of Apple's Apple's recently announced AR kit, and it can automatically scan a document and cut off irrelevant information. There are a ton of new features in iOS 11 that are more related to design tweaks or different lock screen features. I won't be covering them in this review because I'm not sure if these features will change for the September release, but I'm pretty confident that the multitasking features that I talked about before will all be in the final release. And these are the most important changes to the iPad Pro iOS 11 is truly making the iPad Pro a PC alternative. Can it replace your laptop? Yes, in some cases, and no in others. iOS 11 is making it easier, but for a traditionalist, a laptop still might be king, especially for certain tasks like programming or video editing. As a tablet, there's no comparison. iPad offers the best tablet-optimized applications with rich feature sets. It offers an incredible screen, thin and light design, and performance that Android tablets can't seem to catch up to. I highly recommend the new iPad Pro, especially when running iOS 11. It has replaced my laptop for me, but I still have a desktop where I can handle other applications like video editing. There you have it, my iPad Pro review running iOS 11. Let me know what you think of the new iPad Pro or iOS 11 in the comments below. Feel free to ask any questions if I didn't cover them in this review, and I will do my best to answer them, and I will see you in the next video.